Hey guys, Atsu here, and in this video, I'll be giving you my very first impressions, reviews, and recommendations on how to play and build Nahida, as well as showing you guys some Constellation Zero gameplay. But before we get started, just a quick thank you to Hoyoverse for allowing me onto the media server. The media server is a place where some content creators get to access some of the characters a little bit earlier to record for you guys, which is why I already have Nahida leveled up. So, without further ado, I think it comes as no surprise to anybody whatsoever that the Dendro Archon, just like her fellow Archons, Venti, Zhongli, and Raiden, I, she's very good. She's very good in Genshin Impact. If you're looking for someone to apply a lot of Dendro for you, in the same way that Raiden just automatically triggers Electro reactions, well, Nahida is your go-to person. They work a little bit differently, and I will show you guys right now. So, without further ado, let's go ahead to the Primo Geo Vishap, who is going to be our testing dummy today. In fact, let me start this off with Zhongli. It is actually probably better if you know how to dodge, like me, to not use Zhongli or some compositions that have Zhongli in them work as well. We'll talk about that in a moment, but I just want to quickly show you guys exactly how Nahida works. So this is going to be her tap E, which is just like a little whip. 177 damage is because the Primo Geo Vishap is still lying down here. And then once the Primo Geo Vishap gets up, you have, of course, if you do this, this is the hold version. I didn't crit there, but that is how it works. So let's do this. And you can see that 34,000 damage. 34,000 damage. This is a talent level 6 Nahida. 35,760 damage. And what exactly is that damage even coming from? Well, how do I explain this? We got 43,000 damage there just now. Another 34,000 damage. As you can see, I'm just standing here and there's lots of damage coming through from Nahida. Well, that might be a little bit confusing. Let me go and teleport away and I will show you guys the talent levels or the talent descriptions to try and explain as simply as possible what's going on. So, Nahida, her talents. She has a normal attack string, which is going to look like this. Boom, boom, boom. Very cute. In fact, if you do this in front of certain NPCs, they will start applauding for you, which is very, very cute. This is the charge attack right there. Her normal attack string and a charge attack. The damage is okay. It's nothing crazy. Then we have all schemes to know. Sends forth karmic bonds of wood and tree from her side, dealing AoE dendro damage and marking up to eight opponents hit with the seed of Skanda. When held, this skill will trigger differently. So that's the camera zoom thing that you saw a little bit earlier as well. That's the whole version which allows you to enter aiming mode which will allow you to select the limited number of opponents within a limited area you can move your camera around a little bit as well to select the opponents and during this time it's going to be hard to interrupt and knock Nahida out of this stance and when released this skill will deal dendro damage to these opponents that were marked aiming mode can last up to five seconds and can select the maximum of eight opponents as well but this is where it gets juicy so when you mark your opponent you're going to have something called the seed of Skanda, and they will be linked between up to eight enemies depending on how many enemies you've marked and every time you trigger an elemental reaction so that time i was using cookie shinobu's healing with electro and then i had nahida's already applied dendro here with the seed of Skanda. they were triggering reactions together every time a reaction is triggered within a certain time interval you can't do it non-stop over and over and over again there are little gaps in between them you will deal this ability called tri karma purification which will deal damage to the marked opponents of course dendro damage based on her attack and elemental mastery and you can trigger at most one tri karma purification within a short period of time now this duration at which you can trigger these abilities will actually decrease depending on how many hydro characters you have in your team and when you unleash her elemental burst now nahida's elemental burst i'm sure many of you guys have seen it already it's glorious it's one of the coolest looking bursts in the game it is truly and utterly magnificent essentially it's just going to enhance your damage as long as you're standing in it it's not actually going to do anything else outside of that but you know it's better than nothing you know what i'm saying so let's drop this down all right let's drop this down let's drop this down okay let's drop this down and let's start with nahida here so as you can see we've got a lot of blooms coming out as well very nice. I forgot to use my Electro. We got the Hyper Blooms coming there. That was a lot of damage from the Hyper Blooms. And as you can see there, Nahida does a lot of damage. 
with Hyper Bloom, with her Tri Karma Purification, and you can see her zone. I don't know what to call it. Her domain expansion, her reality marble, whatever anime you're referencing here has disappeared now. But that was basically a one cycle rotation. She's very, very strong. And this is at talent level 666. Essentially, what her elemental burst is going to do is going to give you a ton of different buffs depending on your party's composition. Pyro gives you more damage from the Tri Karma Purification. Electro will mean the number of Tri Karma Purifications that you can activate will increase within that same time period. Hydro will mean the Shrine of Maya will last a lot longer and you can see specifically here how long these durations or these numbers are increased by. So ultimately, if you have a one Pyro character, one Electro character, one Hydro character, you will get level one of all of these buffs. Now, if you have got Constellation 1, Constellation 1, when the Shrine of Maya is unleashed and the elemental types of the party members are being tabulated, the count will add one to the number of Pyro, Electro, and Hydro characters, respectively. So this will basically give you, if you have one Pyro character, one Hydro character, one Electro character, and Nahida in your composition already, and you have Constellation 1, you're basically going to have the maxed out version of her elemental burst. Very briefly talking about Constellation, I don't want to make this video all about C0 to C6. That will be another video. C2, though, is looking like the breakpoint once again for another Archon. Zhongli's recommended breakpoint is C2. Raiden's is C2. Venti, eh, not so much. But Nahida is also C2 because this constellation is absolutely ridiculous. Constellation 2, the root of all fullness. Opponents that are marked by seeds of scandal applied by Nahida herself will be affected by the following effects. Burning, bloom, hyper bloom, and burgeon reaction damage. Those reactions have a chance of critting a 20% with 100% crit damage and within 8 seconds of being affected by quicken, aggravate or spread, defense is decreased by 30%. This constellation is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous and I cannot wait to unlock this and show you guys in a video how good this is going to be. It's a very, very, very strong constellation. And then the other constellations are great, but we'll save that for the C0 to C6 video. The weapon that I am currently running on Nahida is a thousand floating dreams of course it fits her aesthetic the artifacts also fit her aesthetic the deep wood memories here that I've got on her and this weapon I would say is of course I highly highly recommend it it's not just good for Nahida this will be a good weapon in general for future characters as well I think this is going to be useful for a lot of different characters in the game already perhaps Sucrose is another one that you could use this on although I'm not a Sucrose player so don't quote me on that but any characters that want elemental mastery that want a damage boost as well that are going to be in teams that aren't mono teams this is going to be very nice and even in mono teams they can be useful as well so i do recommend going for the weapon it's not necessary whatsoever though but it is nice to have on nahida because you do want to get her as close to 800 elemental mastery i would say if you have this weapon anyway is the nice breakish point i'm at 788 myself here and again we're gonna do a little bit of reading and i'll explain to you guys why you want to have around 800 elemental mastery maybe 1000 if you have even better artifacts than i do or you're gonna go all the way for the elemental mastery build all right so as you can see my nahida has an elemental mastery of 788 these are my stats the attack is very low crit rate is only 57.1 percent but don't worry about that i will talk about that in a moment crit damage is 140 no energy recharge and i also have 91.6 percent dendro damage as well some people will recommend to you guys instead of going for a dendro damage bonus gobbler to go for elemental mastery for me personally i don't have any good elemental mastery bonuses on this specific artifact on this specific set and as you can see i have 79 elemental mastery on this piece so i thought i might as well go with this as well you can of course change your time piece to attack or elemental mastery both attack and elemental mastery are going to work for nahida but you do want to prioritize elemental mastery and the reason why is going to be this talent right here each point of nahida's elemental mastery beyond 200 will grant 0.1 percent bonus damage and 0.03 percent crit rate to try karma purification from all schemes to know a maximum of 80 percent bonus damage and 24 percent crit rate can be granted to try karma purification in this manner what on earth does that mean well what that means is after 200 elemental mastery all the way going up to 1000 you will have a scaling increase in your elemental skills you know the boom the 34,000, 40,000 damage thing that i was doing you will have a buff coming through of a maximum of 24 percent crit rate and 80 percent damage bonus and you can achieve that by having 800 additional elemental mastery past 200 meaning you would want to have 1000 elemental mastery
mastery for that to work. Now, the reason why most players won't want 1000 elemental mastery in the first place, especially if you are using the heater as your on field damage dealer, is because of this talent over here, the previous ascension talent, which says, when unleashing illusory heart, the shrine of Maya will gain the following effects. The elemental mastery of the active character within the field will be increased by 25% of the elemental mastery of the party member with the highest elemental mastery. You can gain a maximum of 250 elemental mastery in this manner. So if my very basic understanding of maths is correct, if you have 800 elemental mastery, 25% of that is 200. 800 plus 200 gives you 1000 elemental mastery, which guess what is perfect for this ascension talent to give you the maximum of 80% damage bonus and 24% crit rate. Now, if you are not going for Nahida as your damage dealing character on field as you're attacking, then you would want to have more elemental mastery to make her more supportive. And then when you use her elemental burst, she'll give and transfer a maximum of 250 EM to another character, which as you guys know, EM is very useful for a lot of characters. Senna or Sino, however you want to say his name, benefits from having more EM. Sucrose benefits from having more EM. Kaza benefits from having more EM. Even Cookie Shinobu benefits from having more elemental mastery. I think Yaimiko as well. There's a lot of characters in the game. In fact, anyone that has reaction focused damage, which is almost everyone, is going to benefit from having more elemental mastery. So you can build her as her own damage dealer, or you can build her as someone that's fully supporting other characters with dendro reactions and also just giving damage. For me, Percy, I've gone for a little bit more of the damage build. And that's also why my crit rate is at 54, because when I do get that buff with her elemental burst, I'm gaining around 20 plus more crit rate here. So I'm actually over and just under 80% crit rate and over 75% crit rate. As you guys know, I'm someone that as long as you're above 70% crit rate, I think it's good enough, which is why you want to focus a little bit more on crit damage as well. You can also focus on attack because her abilities will scale off attack and elemental mastery. But my recommendation is, of course, EM is the main focus. You want to have at least 600, minimum 600, depending on your weapon, minimum will be 600. That is the base that everyone should be going for for Nahida. As for the artifact set, you can also go for the Gilded Dreams. Gilded Dreams is definitely going to be focused more on if you want Nahida to be doing the damage as well. But if you are going to go for Gilded Dreams, you really, really do want to have someone else on your team running this artifact set because this four piece set here, which reduces enemies dendro resistance by 30% is really strong. It's really nice for Nahida and you do want to have this on someone else. It doesn't have to be a dendro character wielding this set because technically as long as an elemental skill or burst hits an opponent, it's going to shred their defense. So for simplicity's sake, I would just recommend putting this on Nahida instead of Gilded Dreams. If you want to have C6 Nahida R5 weapon that does an insane amount of damage, then you might want to go with Gilded Dreams instead of this set. I'm not 200% sure on this, by the way, this recommendation, but I do believe you can use both of these artifact sets as well. If you are looking for other content creators who are way, way, way more in the know-how of number crunching, I highly recommend checking out people like Sevi Plays, Zyox, I Win to Lose Gaming, Slice, The Jeff, who streams all the time with the number crunching. So do check those content creators out as well. Right, let's go ahead and go into the domain where there's actually a lot of people there and we will get a better feel of what her AoE is going to be like. That was a lot of talking and not enough gameplay. So I do apologize, but there's a lot of stuff to dissect when it comes to Nahida. So I'm going to get rid of Zhongli here this time and we will see what happens. Hopefully I don't die because if I die, that will be quite embarrassing. In fact, I'll bring Bennett so that I have one category of everyone in the Shrine of Maya here. And something that you can also do with Nahida, which I think is very interesting, is as you can see here, there's a plant here and you can just collect it like that, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, this does not work on the thing that everyone wishes it worked on, which is the butterflies for condensed resins. So that is a little bit of a shame, but you know what? It is what it is. And you know, you're just gonna have to deal with it. All right, here we go. Let's get our, ooh, let's get our thing back here. So I'm just gonna stand here and this should do some nice damage here. We didn't crit on the aggravate there. We also didn't crit on the aggravate there, which is a shame. 
Oh, we crit on that one. 33,000 at the end there. Right. So AOE wise, Nahida, of course, Hyper Bloom is going to be very nice. In fact, if you're going to go for Hyper Bloom, one of the teams I recommend is, of course, have Cookie Shinobu and either Yelan and Sing Cho. You can also put Raiden Shogun in here. The problem with Hyper Bloom is, of course, you're inflicting damage to yourself as well. And of course, if you're trying to hit these blooms on the floor all the time, you're not totally focusing on your enemies as well. So you might want to bring Zhongli. Zhongli, of course, the premium shielder. We are getting other shielders characters in the future of course Zhongli is always going to be the premium because 20 seconds and all of these abilities like Raiden and Nahida they last like 25 seconds so you do want a shield that can keep its uptime as well right let's start off with this and then as you can see we scanned all of those people there very nice let's um not die here okay we're dying but that's okay we'll drop this okay and then we'll drop this and then we'll drop this okay so as you can see here, very nice. The damage is pretty darn good. And I just got to say that I don't think it was surprising to anyone that Nahida was going to be good. The shrine is still there. As you can see, it basically covers the whole domain. So it's essentially very, very difficult for you to run out of the shrine. Uh, outside of the open world, you're probably not going to run out of the shrine. As long as you're in the shrine, you're going to be getting those buffs as well. Let me switch up to Raiden as well. So I can show you guys what the Hyper Bloom team looks like. In fact, let me do it with, instead of Raiden, let me do it with Seno. So Seno, my Seno is Constellation 6, so the damage here might be a little bit skewed. <laughs> it, might, it might be a tiny, tiny bit skewed here, but hopefully it won't be too skewed to the point where, you know what, let me drop, I will drop Yelan because my Yelan also does damage. My Synchro does no damage. Do I even have artifacts on him? <clears throat> energy recharge crit damage. What do we have here? Okay. And your energy recharge now is 276%. Right. So this team should be good enough. So I expect this to go down very quickly. I, I do expect this to, to be over in an instant. We will see. We will see how this works. Okay. So I want to start this. I want to start this. And then I want to start this. And then I want to switch this. And then I want to do this. Okay. And then boom. Right. So what do we have? Okay. This is going very, very quickly. This is going very, very quickly. Well, I don't think that was a very good showcase because I can't tell whether it was mainly Seno doing all the damage or if it was Nahida and Bennett and Sing Cho or if it's just a combination of all of them. But if you were ever wondering, does Seno need Nahida for the Dendro application? My answer would be it works very nicely. If you have Seno alongside Nahida plus the Dendro MC, that works very nicely as well. Of course, if you didn't know, you can, let me show you very quickly, get the Elemental Resonance here for Double Dendro and Double Dendro here is going to give you elemental mastery increased by 50 which is useful for Nahida, it's useful for Dendro MC, it's useful for Seno as well. After triggering burning quicken or bloom reactions all nearby party members gain 30 elemental mastery for six seconds which is also very nice if you're going for the hyper bloom version of that composition that I just showed you guys. After triggering aggravate spread hyper bloom or burgeon reactions all party members gain 20 elemental mastery as well so double Dendro is perfectly fine. Yes you might lose a little bit on her elemental burst here for Nahida but ultimately I think the double Dendro works perfectly fine as well. Let us run Dendro MC. We'll do that again very quickly. Let me go and recharge my energy and I will see you guys all in a moment. Alrighty guys, to finish off the video, we are going to show the Seno Nahida Dendro MC and Synchro composition. Of course, my Synchro doesn't do any damage. If I use Yelan, this will be even stronger, but it is what it is. Nilu is also going to be very nice with Nahida. Unfortunately, my Nilu is not leveled up right now. I will get Get her leveled up eventually she is currently sat at level 40 which i know isn't good enough but she's getting there nilu of course you have to remember you need to have two hydro two dendro or basically nilu plus only dendro or nilu plus only hydro and one dendro it's a weird restriction but it is what it is nilu if hyper bloom works guys the bountiful cores are going to be even better so nilu is going to work absolutely fantastically there are probably other channels out there which have shown you guys how nilu works as well all right so we have the buff version of masanori what is the rotation here that i'm looking for okay i have it i have it down i've probably got it wrong but i have it down in my mind which is what matters the most boom 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 
and then boom. Okay, here we go. So, as you can see, there is a lot of Hyper Bloom damage coming out right now. Very, very, very good. All right. Oh, we have a casualty. And that is why you want Zhongli, guys. That is exactly why you want to have Zhongli. Now you know, guys. Now you know. But as you can see, the burst is back already as well. Here we go. We'll just rock with this as well for the time being. You could survive. Nahida, you're okay. You're okay. As you can see, my Sigcho does no damage at all. We got a lot of Hyper Blooms coming through there. But unfortunately, my Sigcho is not very good at doing damage. And now that our Electro Damage Dealer is down, we're not getting the Quicken or the Aggravate either. No! And this, guys, is truly why you want to have Zhongli in your team. But there you have it, guys. So, again, if you have Nilu, it's going to be a little bit better as well. You can probably bring another healer as well. In this team, as you can see, I don't actually have any healers, which is very, very, very scuffed. So don't do what I've done, guys, because that's not the right way to do this. Right, here we go. And there we go. The Blooms finish him off. In a better universe... We would have Zhongli, and <laughs> we would have Raiden Shogun. And this is probably a better team composition for Hyper Blue. Don't do what I did and get absolutely one shot and massacred by Masanori. You know what? Let's go and finish this off. I'm actually very curious to see if with this team composition, I can one phase or eliminate the Raiden Shogun weekly boss fight before she goes into God mode. All right, Raiden Shogun boss fight. Raiden plus three Archons, technically four, because the A-Land's basically an Archon. She's that strong. So let's do this. L let's do this. Now Zhongli. Now Yelan. Now this. Now Raiden again, and then here we go. Right, let's see. Hyper Bloom. Oh, she shielded it. But as you can see, that's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. And she dodged it again. She's done the stinky stinky. This one. Right, let's bring this down. Let's bring this down. And we'll bring this down. And then we should just be able to eliminate her here like this. I think we are actually going to be able to finish this off. 41,000 damage. Not bad at all. The shield there coming still strong. And let's finish off with Yelan. Just kidding. Let's finish off with Nahida. We are able to finish her off in one rotation. We actually had the Raiden Shogun burst back again. We didn't use it, of course. But yeah, she <laughs> she's pretty strong. You saw the Hyper Blooms there. I really wish I had leveled up Nilu because I would love to see how the Bountiful Cores are going to work when you're able to spam it that quickly. And that was also Raiden Shogun where we didn't get a lucky rotation. She actually split off into four ways. She shielded our first Elemental Burst Strike. So we actually lost a ton of damage and we were still able to finish her off in the first rotation, which is really, really, really cool. Nahida is an absolutely fantastic character very other quick tldrs what other weapons can you use on her i would say this would be okay this is okay ish solar pearl is not bad at all widsith is not bad at all favonius codex if you want energy recharge is not bad at all wandering even star is also not bad at all sacrificial fragments you probably don't need this, but maybe for the energy recharge, it's not bad as well. It gives you elemental mastery as well, so sacrificial fragments wouldn't be too bad either. And then Thrilling Tales of Dragon say if you really want to make her into support, that's just simply applying Dendro, and you want to enhance, like, let's say, your damage of your Seno, or your Raiden, or your Yaimiko, something like that will be fine as well. Artifacts, so you definitely want to go for one of the two in this set. I don't think there's much point using resin on any other artifact sets, so I do recommend going for Deepwood Memories or the Gilded Dreams. Gilded Dreams if you want to make her into more of a damage healer. Constellations wise, if you do want a whale, I would first of all recommend going for the weapon first. Actually, you know what? I would say Constellation 2, if you can guarantee that, would be a lot better than the weapon and C0. So the weapon plus C0, I don't think is good as Constellation 2 plus no weapon. Obviously, the idea would be to have Constellation 2 and the weapon. If you don't have the weapon, you don't have any Constellations, don't worry. Nahida is still super, super good. Just like riding at Constellation 0, just like Venti at Constellation Zero, just like Zhongli at Constellation Zero, super, super good character. Talent level 
level priority elemental skill elemental burst are your priorities and then if you want to make her do a little bit more damage then you level up her normal attacks team compositions anyone that needs a dendro applicator she fits in perfectly to no one's surprise i hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you so so much for watching and have a wonderful wonderful day bye bye